Hello class, today we'll be working on your guide at Lab 2 for IS 2010. To find this assignment, go to your modules tab in Canvas and go under Guide at Lab 2 in week 2. Once you have opened the assignment, let's go over what this project will go over. In Excel, we're going to be building and editing basic formulas. We're going to be setting mathematical order of operations in the formula, using cell references as needed, working with functions, auditing formulas, and then later on, we're going to be answering statistic questions of populations and samples, variables and variable types, and levels of measurement. Okay, let us begin. To start, first thing we should do is go ahead and download this Excel workbook. Once we have downloaded the file, go ahead and open it. Now that we have it open, we should see this protected view. We're going to go ahead and press enable editing. Next step we're going to do is that we now want to save our file under the conditions given. So we're going to rename it with our UID underscore lab underscore two. To do this, we can go over to file, save as, and then I'm going to browse and put it in a place where I know I can find it for later. So let's go ahead and type in UID. Lab underscore two. Go ahead and press save. And now we should see in the top left that we have our UID underscore lab underscore two save. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and analyze what is going on in this worksheet. We can see that we are working with a data set of customers who are buying a product and they have their state information, what date they purchased it, and how much they paid for that product. It seems as though we need to calculate the total, average, mean, median, mode, min, max, and the count. Over here, we're going to summarize using manual formulas. Over here, we're going to be using some ifs. And then down below, we have our statistic questions that we need to answer. Okay. Beginning with this assignment, let's go ahead and start with selecting E14 in the workbook. Now we want to use the sum function to calculate the total sales for the data set. You can either type in the formula or use the formula builder dialog. In this case, we're going to type it manually. So in our cell, make sure that you have it highlighted and type in equals sum, open parentheses, E4, colon, E13, and parentheses. Capitalization, capitalization does not matter here, so you go ahead and press enter. And we should get the exact same answer provided. So 3,287.79. Uh, Okay. Next thing we want to do is that we want to use our average function, but instead of typing in manually, we're going to be using the formula tab. To do this, make sure that you have E15 selected. Go to the formula main menu button. Now go to more functions, press the statistical, and if press on average. It should pop up with this menu called function arguments, and we should see that it has number one and number two. And a good thing about Excel is that sometimes it'll autocomplete for you. If it does not autocomplete, make sure that you have, make sure that in the cell of number one, you type in E4 colon E13. And then now what we need to do is we want to highlight this and we want to make these variables absolute. So go ahead and press F4 or press function F4 for uh, those who do not have a dedicated F4 button. When we make something absolute, we want to make sure that when we're referencing through another formula that the variables do not change as we drag down a formula. I will be showing this later on as we continue. Okay. 
Once we press OK, we should see that the answer is 328.78, which is consistent with what is provided. And then now we need to recall that average and mean are the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and we're going to drag down this formula to the mean. To do this, make sure you have the average cell selected, so E15. And then now we want to go ahead and drag down this green box in the bottom right to E16. And we should have the same exact formula provided as the last one. Now to note what absolute references does, let's go ahead and go back. And let's go ahead and just have this as E4 colon E15. And then now, let's say I want to drag the formula down. We are going to be provided a different answer. And once we see this, so we can go ahead and highlight what this formula is covering. We can see that it is consistent to what we want. But if I were to go ahead and press the mean function instead, we see that our variables have shifted downward. So to prevent this, we make sure that we absolute variables that we want to keep consistent when we're bringing down formulas or copying formulas over. To do this again, just go ahead and highlight your function or your parameters and go ahead and press F4 and everything should be absoluted. Oops. Make sure you press enter. Okay. And the next thing we want to do We want to go ahead and work on our median value now. The next step we want to do is select E16. And we want to copy the formula. And then we want to go ahead and replace it with the word median. So to do this, just go ahead and highlight the cell, E16. Control C, go down to the median. Control V, and now I'm here. Go to the formula builder. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that average and type in median. Press enter, and we just see that the median is 117.99. Now we're gonna follow the exact same steps for E18 through E21. We do this. The next thing we want to do is that we want to do mode, so go, go ahead and up here, go to the formula builder, besides the media, type in mode, in min, rather than media, go ahead and delete that and type in min, in max, and we want to use the formula max, and then in count, we want to use the formula count. Okay. Once we are finished, we should see that our answer should be consistent to, to the picture provided. Seems as though everything is consistent, so we're ready to move on. Okay. Next thing we will do is that we will manually calculate a summary by state that will report sales by state. So let's go ahead and select E24. This will contain the summary for the state of California. So how many sales were placed in California? So we have just one, we have row six. So to do this, we want to do equals, and then we want to press the cell E6, or we can type in cell E6. Go ahead and press enter. The value should be 179.99. Now we are in cell, cell now we are in cell B25. We are looking for the Florida records. So this time we want to enter in equal signs E8. I'm gonna go ahead and press on cell E8 plus E10 plus E11. 
Then I go ahead and press enter. And the answer should be 1855.96. Now we just need to complete the rest of the states. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have Nevada. Seems like we only have one in Nevada. Next we have is Ohio. Seems like we only have one of Ohio. Next one we have is PA, so we're gonna go up here, we have one, two, and now three. Okay. Last one we have is Utah. Press equal signs. Seems like we only have one for Utah. And then now we need to do our total. So go ahead and do equal signs. And we can do this in two different ways. Let's go ahead and just type in sum. Go ahead and highlight. Or you can type it in. Close parentheses. And we should have our sales be 3,287 and 79. If we look over to our canvas page, we just see that we have the exact same total and all the other um, summaries are consistent. So we are good. Next thing we want to do is that we want to calculate our net sales. To do this, we want to uh, note that net sales, the sales profit after all operation costs are subtracted from the gross total sales the note in cell C24 through D20 indicates that operation costs are 43%. Okay, so next thing we want to do is select our, our empty net sales box. We want to go ahead and enter in the formula, our B30 minus another B30 times by 0 0.43, which is 43%. And our answer is 1,874 and four cents. What this means is that in total, because we our total, our total from this is 3,287 and 79 cents, we are deducted 43%. So we want to go ahead and times our total by that 43% and then subtract it by the total in order to get our net sales. Okay. Another thing we want to note is order of operations are uh, do apply to Excel. So we see here that we have a B30 minus B30 times a 0 0.43, but order of operations says that we must times these two numbers first before we do our subtraction. Okay. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to be using summary, summary, summary by state using some ifs. So, if you notice when we were working manually, it was kind of tedious and kind of and really long to process and go over manually. Rather than us manually doing it, let us use Excel to do the work for us. To do this, we want to use our sum if function, which is a conditional summation function, which means it calculates based on a condition. So, we want to select our cell G24. We want to go ahead and enter in our formula, sum if, oops, open parentheses, and we see that we have criterias or parameters that we need to insert. So first thing we have is a range. Next thing we have is our criteria that we want to sum by. And then we have the range, the sum range here. Okay. To start out, we want to go ahead and select our range. So this will be our, our state column. So go ahead and highlight this. We're going to do comma. For this, our criteria is California. So go ahead and click reference cell F24. Next one we have is our sum range. This is the range that we need to sum up. So press comma. And then select our price column. Okay. 
Now, as we can see, we see now that our California is consistent with our manual formula one. But before we can move on, we need to absolute some values. So go ahead and select the cell, go to the formula builder. And now we're gonna absolute reference our, part, our range. So press F4. Next one we have is our criteria price range. Press F4. And then now we are ready to drop and drag. Go ahead and press enter. Not supposed to change here, but next thing we want to do is that we want to copy the rows all the way down to Utah. And there we go. And we see as we look across that it is consistent to our manual formulas. For our total, we're doing the same thing, equals sum. Open parentheses, go ahead and select your data, close parentheses, and press enter, and we have the same total. Okay, now to answer our statistic questions. For number one, how many rows records are in the population of the data above? When we look above, when we're referring to a population, we are referring to, the, to these different customer IDs. And we already calculated this, which is our count in cell E21. And the answer would be 10. For number two, if I choose to calculate statistics on just sales in the state of Florida, what would we call that subset of data? So when we want to take apart a population into smaller chunks, we call this a sample. For number three, what type of variable is product? We go to product, they're all distinct from each other. So we call this categorical. Now, what is the type of variable? What type of variable is price? This is considered quantitative because when we look at price, we see that it is numbers. What level of measurement is the variable product? This is nominal. This is because there is no inherent order to how our products are. What level of measurement is the variable price? It would be continuous. as we can represent new numerical values that can take on fractional amounts. Okay. Now that we're done, your sheet should look something like mine. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and upload our file to Canvas. So in the top right of Canvas, there should be a submit option or at the very bottom, there should be a submit option. When you submit, Go ahead and browse for your file and make sure that you upload the file that has your UID underscore lab underscore two, and you are good to upload. Thank you for following along. I hope you guys have a great day.